In this video, we'll be taking a look at succession, both primary succession and secondary succession. So, in 1883, the volcanic island of Krakatoa in the Indian Ocean was blown to pieces by a volcanic eruption. 14 years later, there were 49 plant species with lizards, bats, and birds. By 1929, a forest containing over 300 plant species had grown. Now, this is an example of ecological succession, a series of more or less predictable changes that occur in a community over time. Ecosystems change over time, especially after disturbances like on the island of Krakatoa. Some species die out and new species move in. The volcanic eruption on the island of Krakatoa can cause new land to form or sterilize existing areas. And this can lead to what is known as primary succession. Primary meaning first. A succession that begins in an area with no remnants of an older community or life that's beginning there for the very first time. You can find primary successions where glaciers are retreating, the ice is melting, exposing bare rock where new life can start to form. There was no life there before, but it starts developing over time. Now, primary succession, the first species to colonize a barren area or where there is no life are called pioneer species. One ecological pioneer is lichen that grows on bare rock. Over time, the lichen convert or fix atmospheric nitrogen into useful forms for other organisms. They break down rock and they can add organic material to the soil. Certain grasses, like those found on Krakatoa, are also known as pioneer species. So here's an example of primary succession. We have bare rock, and over time, we have the pioneer species, the first species to populate the area, move in, and then we see that new life starts to form. The grassy uh, weeds start to take root, grass starts to form, and over the course of several years, we have uh, trees and shrubs that begin to appear. And it all started where there was no life before, and that is an example of primary succession. Okay, secondary succession. Sometimes existing communities are not completely destroyed. When a disturbance happens that doesn't completely destroy a community, secondary succession happens. And this is succession that occurs in an area with communities that survived a disturbance. Secondary succession proceeds faster because the soil is already in the area and as a result, newer existing vegetation can grow. Examples, examples of where secondary succession can happen are areas where hurricanes hit, farm farming, logging, deforestation, and so on. During secondary succession, the land after the event usually returns to its climax community. And the climax community is always at the end of a, usually a sequence, and it's always going to be with trees and shrubs. All right, so why does succession even happen? Every organism helps change and sort the environment. As one species alters its environment, other species may find it easier to survive. An example would be as lichens as organic matter and for soil, mosses and other plants can colonize and grow. As trees grow, their branches and leaves, it produces shade and cooler temperatures near the ground for the organisms that may live on the ground. All right, climax community. Scientists used to think that succession follows the same path in a general time frame. However, new evidence suggests otherwise. New evidence shows they do not always follow the same path and don't always become uniform and stable. Now, succession after natural disturbances. Coral reefs and rainforests recover from storms and temperate forests and grasslands recover from wildfires. Secondary succession and healthy ecosystems following natural disturbances often reproduces the original climax community that was there. Now, some communities end up looking like patches in a quilt. Some communities are disturbed so often they never become stable. A climax community refers to the organisms that almost fully populated an area. It's usually found at the end of an area growing back or one that is growing for the first time. And this is an example of secondary succession. The disturbance here would be a wildfire. We can see that not all life has been destroyed. The climax community has been destroyed, the trees here, but we can still see some grass. And then we see over time, the climax community returns and we are looking at the end here and we can see the climax community has come back. It's reached its uh, pinnacle once again. And this is secondary succession because life is beginning again, not for the first time. All right.
succession after human disturbance and studying those patterns. Now, ecosystems may or may not recover from human-made disturbances. It is possible for humans to change a microclimate and soil enough to prevent the regrowth of the original community. Now, ecologists compare similarities and differences among succession areas. They have found that in primary succession, it always begins with seeds or spores that later gives way to other organisms and eventually the climax community. Ecologists continue to study places where disturbances are so they can further their understanding and look for changes. That's it for this one. If you have any questions, you can always post a comment below. We'll see you guys next time.